our country is in decline right now. Uh, we see it with military decline, cultural decline, but we also see it in terms of economic decline. Uh, and I'm running for president because we cannot be satisfied with simply managing this decline a little bit better than the Democrats. I'm running for president because we need to reverse the decline of this country and restore our country to the greatness that it deserves. And that begins uh, by restoring an American economy that actually works for American families again. And the reality is, if you've seen over these many years, American families have been saddled with weak economic growth, uh, high prices, their quality of life, qu uh, uh, quality of life has stagnated, uh, yet we've seen our national debt explode, and the Chinese Communist Party continues to eat this country's lunch every single day. Economic policy needs to be focused on making the cost of living more affordable and the American dream more attainable for American working families. And if you don't get that right, you cannot be successful as a country. And we cannot allow no longer the failed ruling class in this nation to dictate our nation's policies. We have to defeat those individuals and institutions that have caused our economic malaise. We cannot have policy that kowtows to the largest corporations in Wall Street at the expense of small businesses and average Americans. There's a difference between a free market economy, which we want, and corporatism, in which the rules are, are jiggered to be able to help incumbent companies. We also have to stop selling out this country's future to China. Uh, it is hurting our middle class and it is hurting our national security. We see, for millions of Americans, the American dream slipping away. Costs of life's essentials have gone through the roof. Things like buying a home, purchasing a car, starting a family, things that used to be the hallmark of the American dream are now cost prohibitive for so many people throughout our country, even getting groceries on a weekly basis has become a major challenge. Think about this. In, uh, today, the bottom half of households have less wealth than they did in 1989. Meanwhile, the top 10% have added 29 trillion in wealth. COVID lockdowns accelerated that trend. It crippled the market share of small businesses and benefited the largest corporations. It diminished the purchasing power of our middle class and it upended our workforce such that millions of people left the workforce and still to this day have not returned. We now have six million or more prime age men who are neither working nor looking for work at all. In 1953, the labor participation rate amongst that cohort was 98%. Today, it's 